Hola, ¿qué tal? Thanks for watching. I hope that this mic will provide better sound than last time. And anyway, today I wanted to talk you something shorter as well. Hopefully you will bear with me until the end. It's about... Uh, actually, it's really stealing from SQL BI as usual, but this time it's uh, about a very particular use of calculation groups that I didn't think about before, and I think it's brilliant. It's just about giving default value, values to slicers without actually putting the value there. So doing it with call groups. So shall we do it? Anyway, I'll jump right into the final thing. As you can see, here I don't have anything selected on my slicers. And yet, it's selecting July 2008. Okay, this in a regular uh, use case would be like the current month, which is a, a very common use case that people ask. I mean, can I, you know, make the, the month change automatically? And I mean, there are some workarounds, but not real good solutions. So in this case, uh, let's imagine this is 2021, yeah? but I'm using the Contoso data set. So I just deleted, <laughs> subtracted 13 years from that, and it's July 2008. Okay, and do you see I'm using the default values um, calculation group? And when I do select something like May, it works just fine. I chose May. And if you select another year, 2008, there is something. Okay, this works. And then if I unselect this, we come back to July. Okay, so maybe it's worth to give a look at the, at the code as well. Because, well, it's pretty close to what uh, Alberto did in his video. In this case, there is only one little thing that we need to be aware of, is that we're using both columns from the same table. Okay, so in this case, we use each cross filtered, we put just the column and we remove filters from the other one yeah, because we just want to see if there's a filter specifically on that column or not. And with this approach, this works fine. Also, since I just had two tables, I didn't go for like the full-fledged <laughs> solution that they were pointing to. Um, I just uh, also put into variables the treat as part so I can reuse it easily here. And that's about it. Okay, I just realized this is too small, but I'll just zoom in the video. Sorry about that. Okay. So if we go back to the... Here, also, I think it's very good because this uh, default values thing also there's solves another use case or another situation in which you want to make sure that there is at least one item selected. Yeah, you can maybe you can have two or three, but you don't want to, you know, just leave it completely all selected just when they clear the, the slicer. Yeah, so. Here, let's have a look at what happens if I don't have my default values. Okay, here I have both, so it's all good. Now I don't have default values, and I clear that. So if I clear this one, I clear this one, is uh, this is completely awful, right? So you can see some benefit already from just using default values. So it's like having always a backup. Uh, if you don't want to select anything, I'll just show you something that is meaningful and probably is what you want to see. If you want to play around, just select what you want. But you always have this backup. I think it's really good, and I think I'm going to use it a lot. And I think I'm going to make even a script so I can just, you know, put it in any report that comes my way. And I can just set it in, just put the slicer somewhere, maybe in the filters pane, sitting there. So. Uh, I think I'll use it. What about you? <laughs> okay. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.